This is an exercise on horizontal translations of trig functions. And for your information, horizontal translations of any wave would, are called uh, phase shifts. If you've studied waves a little bit in other courses, you'll know that frequently you're dealing with waves being in and out of phase, which means that relative to another wave, that there has been a horizontal translation. So for this unit, they are considered in interchangeable. You will see phase shifts most of the time, but remember that they are just referring to a horizontal translation. So for exams, if you use the term horizontal translation to describe a phase shift, no problem at all. This is where things get a little bit confusing though, and it's a tough unit to a tough topic to deal with just because the graphs are more complex and harder to follow. We do use a few basic rules and if you can get mastery over them you can work your way through this section. So let's begin by comparing two functions. First off just a regular cosine curve y1 equal cos theta and the second one is y2 is equal to cosine in brackets theta minus pi over 4. Now this setup you've seen before in Unit 1 when you're dealing with horizontal translations. Now I'm going to graph both of them. First off I have this cosine curve, just a standard looking cosine curve. And you'll notice that as always with untransformed cosine curves, the y-intercept, the crest, is at 1. And each quarter of the curve is pi over 2. And so you can see that works out nicely. You have an x-intercept pi over 2 you have the minimum value of the function at pi and then another x-intercept at 3 pi over 2 then back to the max again at 2 pi so that is the period being 2 pi one full cycle. Now the second curve is um, got this phase shift of pi over 4 to the right and you'll notice the graph is shape is identical but it's just been moved over pi over 4 units to the right so the graph was literally picked up and moved over now that means that its crest, its starting point, is no longer on the y-axis. It's pi over 4 units over to the right. And what I like to do with these when I'm dealing with phase shifts is, by, is compare the starting points. And the starting points for a cosine curve would refer to the, the uh, crest, which should be, normally, right on the y-axis. And you can see that with the first one, that that's where we're located. And then the starting point of the transformed curve is going to be right there at pi over 4. Now it's true that every point of this graph in red has been moved over pi over 4, but it's pretty tough to follow. So what I look for in a cosine curve is that starting point, that crest. And then I find, ask myself, well, how far over has it been moved? And as we noted earlier, this is a phase shift or a horizontal translation of pi over 4 units to the right. And of course, this could have been done in degrees as well, too, and some of the questions do. Let's take a look at another pair. So we compare these two functions. And just to make, keep things interesting, I'm, I'm calling one f at theta and the other g at theta. So f at theta is, a, is equal to 2 sine 5 theta. g at theta is 2 sine bracket 5 bracket theta plus pi over 3. Close, close brackets. The original curve, f at theta, has been stretched both horizontally and vertically. But g at theta maintains those stretch factors but puts a phase shift in as well. So let's take stock of the second curve, which has got the full package. The amplitude is 2, meaning that there's a vertical stretch by a factor of 2 about the x-axis. The period. Well, we have a horizontal stretch by a factor of 1 over 5, the reciprocal of that 5 value. That means that the period is 2 pi over 5. Remember that the rule, I didn't write it out, but the period is equal to 2 pi over b. So that period is 2 pi over 5. Now for graphing, I like to get the quarter. And I do that just so it helps me set up my scale, my x scale better if I'm dealing with an awkward graph. So when I multiply that by 1 over 4, 
I didn't show the work for this again, but 2 pi over 5 times 1 over 4 is equal to pi over 10. Let's keep that number around. It might be useful later on. And then we have a phase shift of pi over 3 units to the left, theta plus pi over 3. Remember from unit 1 that the signs are opposite. If you're going plus pi over 3, that's moving you to the left. So there's lots going on with this curve. And I'm going to take it right to the beginning. I'm going to start with a regular sine wave that is totally untransformed. Y is equal to sine theta, looking like this. Notice that for sine curves, that we're beginning not at the crest, we're beginning halfway between the trough, the minimum, and the crest, the upper. And that will be right on the origin. But the period is still 2 pi. Now I wouldn't expect you to do this for a graph normally because you don't have to start right at the beginning, but I'm going to walk us through each of the stretches and translations. So here's our original. And when we stretch it by a factor of 2 vertically with an amplitude of 2, just that's all you do. The max is 2, the minimum is negative 2. Notice the x-intercepts do not change. In fact, none of the x-coordinates change. Now, um, I've still got that stretched graph in red on the screen, so I'm keeping the previous graph on there. But with the graph in blue indicates that horizontal stretch by a factor of 1 fifth. And so you can see that this one has been pushed towards the y-axis. So there's five times as many waves or cycles as there are on the red graph. So it's getting a little tight, a little tough to read. But you can see that that does work basically like that. It's, it's cycling for every one red uh, period, there's going to be five blue ones. Now I'm going to remove the red one and just look at the blue one and then insert the horizontal translation. So it's getting very small and hard to read. But the graph in black is g at theta. That's our final product. The graph in blue is f at theta, before we did the phase shift. And if you look at it, one way to analyze this is to say that the graph in black, the g at theta, is pi over 3 units to the left of the graph in blue. Now, I know some of you are probably already thinking, well, couldn't we have moved the blue graph to the right and had the same answer? The answer is yes, and that comes into play in the next lesson. But for now, I'll stick with the basic information. And I'll note that the period, or the, excuse me, the phase shift is pi over 3. So they are pi over 3 rads out of phase. The black graph is that far to the left of the blue. So we literally picked up the blue graph and moved it over to the left. Now, for my money, this graph is too small and too difficult to read. So I'm going to go back to the, I'm going to change the scale. And I'm going to refer back on my calculator, although I'm not going to show this on the calculator. I'm going to refer back to the window settings, and I'm going to change the x scale to pi divided by 10. So on your calculator, in your window setting, you just go pi divided by 10. You let the calculator decimalize it for you, because it will. You don't need to do it yourself. So just pi divided by 10, and um, as a decimal is about 0.314. And by setting your x scale to that quarter value, it cleans up the graph. It makes it much easier to read. So I see this one now, and I can see that the, the black graph, easier to, to, to identify what's going on with it. That's not necessary, but it does make for a cleaner display. Let's try another one. Here we have another, we're back to cosine. The original one is y1 is equal to cosine of 1 half theta. y2 is equal to cosine 1 half theta minus pi over 3. And if you think back to unit 1, you will remember that that second graph, that second function, will require a little bit of work before we, we identify what's, the, what's going on. But I will graph the initial one, y1 is cos 1 half theta, just so we have something to go with. Um, this one, although it's kind of a normal looking graph, it's got the y-intercept uh, with the crest, as it should be for a cosine curve. But because of that b value of 1 half, it means that our period is going to be 4 pi, because that is a horizontal stretch by a factor of 2. Or if you prefer, 2 pi divided by b. In either case, period is 4 pi. So this one has been stretched away from the y-axis. No big deal. 
if we then take a look at this second curve and clean it up, we have to start by isolating the theta or the x variable. You will recall, I hope, that we have to factor out a one-half from both terms within, within the bracket. So this is not a phase shift of pi over 3 to the right as it looks. When we divide both terms by one-half carefully, we will get one-half sitting outside the, the new bracket and then theta minus 2 pi over 3. Remember when you divide by one-half you are multiplying by 2 over 1. So be really careful with that step. Pi over 3 divided by one-half is 2 pi over 3. But now we're set up because relative to the original curve which had like you know the amplitude of 1 and the period of 4 pi we have moved that graph 2 pi over 3 units to the right or rads to the right. And this time we have a vertical translation as well. So we've got both translations, one unit down. And if you were drawing this freehand, you would really struggle with it. There's techniques that you can use for it. But because this course is fairly calculator based, I'm using my calculator for it more. And by the way, you can enter it into your calculator in either version. Most people prefer to enter it before they divide out the factor of one half, simply because you don't need as many brackets. So when we look at these graphs together, the graph in black is the original one with just the 4 pi period and then otherwise a normal looking curve. And the graph in blue is our translated one. So I have moved it 2 pi over 3 to the right and then also one unit down. So you can see it's out of phase horizontally, it's also dropped down. Let's take a closer look at the vertical translation first. Because it's been translated one unit down, right through the center of the graph is a dotted line. It's not really part of the graph, but it helps us to see where what used to be the x-axis, where it's located now. So that's, that accounts for our vertical translation. The graph should have been centered on the x-axis. Now it's centered on y equal negative 1. That would be your d value. Then with respect to the horizontal translation, I'm going to start at the compare the start points again. Now the original curve, as we would expect for a cosine graph, will have its crest right on the y-axis. And we have moved that crest over to this point. So you just find, you locate the nearest crest. And the value of that is 2 pi over 3. So there is our phase shift of 2 pi over 3. We took the original graph, we moved it down, we moved it over to the right. And by locating that point, that crest, it's the easiest one to trace. So this concludes the exercise. The next lesson will have examples of working the other way with it. Thank you for your time.